So thank you all for making the time. I know it's a really busy time of year. It's an opportunity to, for us to reflect on the whole UNSW professional journey. It's been a year since we kicked off the first session. Um, so before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge the medical people that are the traditional custodians of this land. And I'd like to pay my respects to the elders past and present and extend that respect to other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islands who are present here today. Um, I'd also like to uh, just um, particularly welcome David McLean, who you'll probably remember from the collaboration panel session, who's kindly agreed to come back and participate in this closeout session as well, which is very kind of him because he's already obviously given up time once and now again. So, um, and I, I just also like to um, thank uh, everybody for um, their continued support for this program for the last 12 months, and we'll talk a bit about what happens next at the end of today today's session. So. You would have seen on the agenda, we've got a guest speaker, Dr Hilary Armstrong. The reason we've asked Hilary to come and help us in this last session is really so we can think about the, all the learnings we've had through the whole 12 month program. And I guess think about how we consolidate that learning, how we move from understanding some new concepts and ideas and putting some of those things into practice in our everyday leadership. And Hilary's gonna give us some ideas, things to think about um, as we move forward into next year and um, on our leadership uh, journey. Uh, what I'll do first before that is just recap um, some of the speakers, some of the topics we've covered in the last 12 months, because that'll kind of help reflect, refresh your mind as you move into Hillary's session and she's asking you to think about some of the behaviour changes that you've tried over the past 12 months and some of the things that maybe haven't worked so well um, and some of the things that you might have forgotten that we've talked about at, at this, this program previously. Um, and at the end we'll have the opportunity to have a, a drink downstairs and a bit of a, a get together and chat as well. So we're right at the end. Um, it seemed like such a daunting um, schedule of programs when we first put this slide up last December and had all those sessions ahead of us. And now we're at the other end and we're in that period of reflection. So just to recap, um, for those of you who were here last December, and there was probably about half of you were, we had a session where we asked uh, Chloe Hawcroft from AMP to come and talk about AMP's journey um, as they moved from being a very siloed, complicated, difficult to navigate organisation and some of the things they tried around focusing on leader behaviours to try and accelerate their transition. And for those of you who were here at that session, you remember Chloe talked about her own experience of getting some very confronting feedback from her EA as the EA was out walking out the door and in terms of the, the impact that had on her in terms of how she treated people with care and respect. You'll, you might also remember we had a panel discussion with a number of our executive team. Um, and and Julie Cogan, who was on that panel, um, challenged us all to think about, through showing the video with the gorilla in it, <laughs> a few nods around the room, probably from the people who missed the gorilla in the video, about actually um, what we might miss when we're not focused on the things that are really important. And I think a number of us didn't see the gorilla, we just saw the bouncing ball as we watched that video. And I guess that was one of the learnings about what you, what you pay attention to as you, as you move um, through organisations. In the first spotlight session, we had Jackie Curtis, who was the Chief Operating Officer from the ATO. And I think a number of us had probably, or you might have yourself had some reservations about hearing from the ATO, um, wondering what we could learn from them. And I think what Jackie shared with us was how they'd managed to transform the organisation from turning their own mindset on its head, turning their mindset from thinking about themselves as a group of accountants, a large group of accountants, to thinking about people who provide customer service um, and that being their, their everyday mission. And she talked about things like kudos awards, she talked about transforming professional staff functions, which was sort of probably a bit of a precursor as we, as professional staff leaders at UNSW, thought about the operational excellence uh, experience we were about to embark on. We also at that session, David's not here today, but David Cammy, um, some of you probably remember, got up and shared his own personal story of a leadership um, activity he'd participated in where he'd worked with his team about having much more honest and authentic conversations and he t uh, used the term free the elephant in the room and I know a number of people around the room and in UNSW professional then used that term to actually encourage other people to be more open and honest in the discussions they were in. 
We had the um, zombie busting session with Amantha Imba from Inventium where she talked about um, what really in, um, innovative organisations have at their core, what drives them. And we had a bit of an experiment in the room about who could actually nominate the number one driver um, in innovative organisations. And uh, what we found was the number one driver, at least in the research that uh, Amantha drew on, was having really positive interpersonal exchanges at work. And I think that was really, as we think about the way all the behaviours at UNSW um, integrate, it's really all about how we create really positive interpersonal experiences. We also had Ian come and share his tips about how you make innovation stick in large organisations. Um, and we also, at the support and challenge group, for those of you who went to that, many of, I know lots of people really enjoyed that support and challenge group, where we got you to think about a problem you were having from somebody else's perspective. So I know um, some people had to think about their work UNSW problem from Taylor Swift's perspective or Google's perspective. And I guess it was really to try and encourage us to think about taking different perspectives and the power of that in terms of problem solving. We had at the expo at that session as well, where we had some examples of people at UNSW who were involved in innovative activities, um, um, a number of internal examples and some external examples. There's that activity I was talking about. Um, and then we had Laurie Pearcy come um, and introduce us or challenge us in our thinking about the way we think about which division of UNSW we work in um, and how even just that terminology might constrain our collaboration across UNSW. And we had the panel discussion with Lucinda Zucker from CEB talking about where um, collaboration flourishes and how successful leaders are really good at networking. And we had our panel with David and Vina um, and Natalie talking about um, their experience of collaboration and how if you really want collaboration you've got to sort of throw the shackles of your own function, your own job title and really work together to try and solve problems collaboratively. Then we had the, uh, uh, one of the sessions that I think was quite thought provoking for a number of us where Josh came and talked to us about the challenges around diversity, got us to think about our circle of trust and who was in it and what that might mean in terms of how much we really did embrace diversity in terms of when we reflected on who was in our uh, in a, in a circle. Um, and he also talked about um, the analogy of the elephant and the mouse and got us to think about how we'd be more deliberately inclusive of people. So when we're elephants in a land of elephants that we might forget about the mice and tread on them unless we're always conscious about people who might be different from us and how we consciously include them. And then at the last session, Nick Fisk came and shared how he thought the display's respect behaviour was the most difficult. It was the fluffiest, I think, were his words. Um, but I think one of the reasons he felt like that was because often it's when you see displaying respect not happening that you realise how important it is. And we had Leanne, who couldn't come, to, come along today because um, she's unwell, but she, I, I think, um, shared with us some of the um, things to think about in terms of when we're at our best. You remember she did the cards, when you're at your best and when you're not at your best and what might be triggering that for you? What might be the things that cause you not to be the best person in terms of displaying respect with other people? Um, and she also encouraged us to think about those um, emotions of curiosity and compassion and forgiveness and think about how that might create the climate in your own team to where things like respect might flourish. And in the support and challenge group, the last support and challenge group that a few of you participated in here, we got you to reflect across all those five behaviours. And if you were in that group, um, in one of those groups, that'll be really interesting as um, uh, Hillary takes us through the next little while in terms of thinking about what our personal strengths are across those five behaviours and um, what might be the biggest challenges in terms of how we operate at work and at home and what our team strengths might be. And I know since then a number of us have had some conversations about some of the things we observed around that. Um, and so I think that'll be be, um, very interesting for you to think about in this session. So in terms of what we're really, where we're really up to here, you remember this model, it was the first model, I think Janet put it up at the first workshop. When we did our mid-program review, most of you indicated that you've become much more comfortable in those bottom three steps, understanding what the behaviours are, recognising them when you see it, having some view about how you assess yourself. But what you were still thinking was quite difficult was how you go about practising those behaviours, how you go about asking and receiving feedback, and also providing feedback around the behaviours as well. And that 
that's really, in essence, some of the things that Hillary will be talking to us. So without further ado, Hillary. Um, Hillary, for some of you might have been at Leadership Forum when Hillary presented. She's an expert in concepts like collaborative leadership, uh, coaching skills. She works across the higher education industry, but also in private industry as well, um, to really encourage leaders to flourish and organisations to really focus on the culture that they want. So please welcome Hillary. That's a wonderful beginning, isn't it? I could ask you all, what do you dream into it and what does it mean, but I won't. And I'm sorry, the bit beside it, which I called this session Reflection in Action, um, which is something very dear to my heart because many, many years ago when I had to write a master's uh, thesis, uh, a research master's thesis, I did it on reflection or reflexivity, which is reflecting on ourselves as we reflect in the world and act in the world. So it's something that's been around for me for many, many years. Um, I was, uh, you've all been through a lot of experiences in this program, wonderful experiences. I was glad to see the elephant up there um, twice, elephants, mice, gorillas. It's been a great uh, uh, zoo of experiences you've had in the room. I had one organisation uh, two or three years ago I worked with with the Ethics Centre where the elephant in the room became such a metaphor, they actually bought little elephants for everybody's desks. And when you had an elephant that you wanted to share in a meeting, you actually took your elephant into the meeting with you. And so when anybody ever brought an elephant into the meeting, everybody really woke up because they thought there's something juicy about to be uh, happening. Chaos happened when there was more than two elephants in the room, though. <laughs> it became a cultural thing. So. Today I'd like to connect this learning from and with others with what you've been doing because I believe that it's actually learning as a social process. For you, those of you academically inclined, uh, Vygotsky was the one who said, actually mostly we learn from others. The modeling from others in conversations with others. And this is the basis, I think, of what we call a community of practice. Now, why we're saying that is that there are two ways learning has been constructed in all our education institutes. One is that passive learning, where somebody wise and in, an expert stands up like I am right now, takes up all the airspace, and all of you sit there listening probably thinking about what you're going to cook for dinner tonight or what's happening back at the office. A, a very passive learning uh, um, model. But there is other models of learning which I call active or experiential learning. They, came, they became very uh, well known, particularly in organizational learning in the 80s with the work of a man called David Kolb. And he basically said, we have experiences and that's an action in the world. How we actually learn is by reflecting on those experiences, making some sense of them, and then planning a different action. That's how we all learn. We do, we act, and we reflect. Now, why I've got a little triangle between act, make sense, and plan, is what's happened in organizations is they have removed the reflective capacity from our work. As we've got busier and busier action, do it now, do it quickly. I don't want to read the whole report. I only want to read your summary. Dot point conversations, getting my drift, memo speak. This is what's happened in organization. The capacity that's gone is that ability to stand back take a bit of time, reflect, and think on the actions that are happening in order to make what I call wiser decisions. And I think we need to bring the reflective capacity in. So today, I don't want it to be about me. I want it to be about you. And I'm going to hopefully, out of this afternoon, 
get you working not only at your tables, but at other tables as well, in order to build a community of practice around all the work that you've been introduced to over this rather exciting program. A community is practice, as you can see, a group of people, common in, uh, purpose and interest, and also that you have a common goal of actually improving what you do or your capacity to do what you do. Members of a community of practice actually they interact regularly. Now, I don't mean they come to meetings like this regularly, necessarily, but they make sure they meet formally and informally over a cup of coffee, um, in meetings like this, getting together with people after work, in a lunchtime, sitting on the library lawn, whatever. It's where you actually get together and have purposeful conversations about what you are struggling with, challenged with, want to learn more of, and want to share with other people something that you've done that may help them in that area. It's the seeding of knowledge across an organization is what we're needing lots of at the moment, and which I hope we'll be encouraged to do. Now, of course, to do that, you have to reflect have a reflective conversation. Maybe people asking you questions, and maybe it's you sitting on your own journaling, maybe you sitting on the bus going home at night thinking about what happened at work, what happened in a meeting. This is all reflection. Trouble is, we've even removed reflection from sitting on the bus and train because we now have the earphones in and whatever. This is the society that we've recreated, uh, that, that we're creating, and I want to bring back this reflection, this time for reflection, this time for looking at the sunset, for just sitting, doing nothing. They used to say in the um, 90s that in Japan, when you saw a manager in his office with his feet up on the windowsill staring out the window, you used to go, ah, he is reflecting. But if you saw the same thing in Australia, you rushed off to do the performance management because it was the time for the person to leave the, <laughs> leave the organization. So today we're going to engage in some reflection and exploration, and hopefully along the way support and coach each other with your learnings. So the first thing I want you to do is I have at the top this word do. And I want you to think back on all those sessions that you've had and the influence they've had in between. And I'm going to use uh, uh, a little phrase which is what, so what, and what now. And that's the cycle of reflection that we're going to do for the afternoon. So on your own, you have Hopefully something, a piece of paper in front of you or something that you can write on um, or um, it doesn't matter if it's, yeah, whatever, electronic or non-electronic. I'd like you to think back on those sessions that uh, Sarah so skillfully summarized before I came on. And I want you to think about what session has stayed with you the most, or what part of a session. It doesn't have to be the whole session. What was said or done? Now stay with that, don't go to the why yet. What, what session stayed with you the most, or what part of a session stayed with you the most? And what was said and done at that time that was meaningful to you personally? Then I'd like you to go to the so what, why did it matter to you, and what does this imply in terms of your work and life? And then to the now what, what did I do or think differently after the session, and what would I do now reflecting on it? Is that clear? So would you go around the cycle? But I'd like you to write it down so if we could share paper around or things, because you're going to go using this for the afternoon and sharing it. And I would really appreciate if we're in the session, if you stuck with what we're doing in the session rather than doing other things. Okay, so would everybody um, just put the pen and pencil away for a minute? And I'd like you to push your chair back from the table just a little bit.
And I'd like you to put your feet back on the, flat on the ground and push your chair, your back, right back into the table for a minute. Now I'm going to give you a little challenge. I'd like you to take t 10 deep breaths. You can close your eyes, open your eyes, whatever. But the task is that you focus on the breaths. And every time your mind wanders, you have to start back at number one breath. How many breaths can you take without your mind wandering? So off you go. Your task is 10 breaths with your mind only focused on counting the breath. Okay, did anybody reach 10? Nine? You think you reached 10? Well done. Nine? <laughs> anybody reach eight? Seven? Yep, six? Five? Four? Three, two, okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a very easy practice to show how busy we are in terms of our minds. And the average, by the way, in the population is three to five breaths without mindfulness training, without um, meditation training. Most of us cannot do that focus beyond that time. And the focus has got less over the last um, 15 years. That ability to do it is less. All right, now you have your recording of your session and the activity up here. What I'd like you to do is stand up, find two people in the room you don't know or know much less, and uh, that's the first task. Stand up, find two people, sit down somewhere around the room where you can see the front. But I'd like you to be working with people <laughs> totally different in terms of who and where you are in the university. Hi. So, here you are in your first community of practice little meeting. Two people you don't know, you're sitting around on the lawn, but we're staying with the common purpose, which is the learning from these sessions. What I'd like each of you to do, each person, share what session you learned from, including what was said or done in the session that was meaningful to you. Share why it mattered to you and what it implied in terms of your work and life and how you can support each other to embed the learning. Now, what I want you to do is have a conversation. This is not, I don't expect one person, then the next person, then the next person go through the whole thing. Make sure it's a, conver a conversation where if you actually had learning from that session, actually share it along the way. So please feel free to use this as a more like a semi-structure that you stick to the task, but you do it in your own informal way. And get to know each other along the way as well. Off you go. You're going to have about 10 minutes to do this, 10 or 12 minutes, so please enjoy. <laughs> We haven't quite finished this yet. I'd like you just to spend two minutes with the group you're in now, appointing an ambassador for your group, because that ambassador is going to go to the next group and seed the learnings that you've all had in your triad into the next group. All right? So spend two minutes. 
choosing an ambassador and maybe what the vital takeaways that you have had out of this program are that you would like to share with the next group. Okay, two minutes just deciding on the ambassador. <laughs>
We, when, when you've got your seven on the table, I want you to actually have a conversation because you might need some clarity to help people understand what you wrote down. Because I see, I see killing off zombies and zombies everywhere. So <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> but uh, could we? Could you actually have a conversation about? the topics that you put there so that everybody understands the topics because we are soon going to do a ranking. So your job is to sell your topic. <laughs> but not yet. No, no ranking yet. Just have a conversation. Yeah. yeah. Has all the groups been round? Yeah. All right. Now, you are, as a group, you need to choose number one priority, please. Now, you can do this in two ways. You can say, oh, we don't have to have a discussion about this. We'll just all agree. That's the sort of passive way of having a, a good <laughs> argument. Or you could actually have a robust discussion and put forward your case why you disagree or agree with something, which gives you a practice of not just taking everything you're given, but actually, you know, challenging it. So as a group, I'd like you to rather than all agree immediately, I'd like you to put forward a case why things should or shouldn't be number one. Okay? And then I'm going to ask you uh, for your rationale. You have 30 more seconds to come up with your number one. 30 seconds starting now. 30 seconds. Time's up. Time's up. Now, we're needing a group ambassador again. And remember, remember one of the rules of team meetings and meetings, that when you're in the meeting and the decision comes up, but you don't fully agree with it, but the whole group has decided on that way forward, how should you act when you go out of the meeting? <laughs> That's what usually happens. <laughs> it's another version of the, of the zombie, I think. Yes, yes. So um, you're, you may not all agree. However, as a group now, you have to present the case to the outside world. All right? So I want you to use the what, so what, and now what type framework, I want you to say what you've decided on as a group, uh, why you've decided on it, and what you want to do, what you want done for the further development, what you want the runners of this program to know as what is the step for further development. All right? Okay, choose the one, even if you don't agree. Yeah. The why and the what now? What's your way forward with it?
I love um, Henry Ford's phrase, if everyone's thinking the same, nobody's thinking. <laughs> and I think that's a, this is the diver inclusion part of diversity, I think, yeah, yeah. Okay, last table. God, I am loud. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we have four wonderful uh, um, ongoing projects, learnings that could happen. Um, in just very quickly in your group, what's the next step? What are you going to do? What is your group going to do? Just very quickly. You've only got 30 seconds because Sarah's looking at me. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Just one tiny little step is all I'm asking for. One teensy weensy step, maybe a conversation, maybe a phone call. One step. <laughs> all right. So what's this table going to do? We're committing to a reflection of I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Rest and reflection on the issue over Christmas. Could we have a bit of purpose? Oh. <laughs> what are you going to about? We're going to yeah. tap into some communication expertise. That happens to be at the table. Fantastic. <laughs> what about, what's the step, a little step for you guys? Girls? <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful, I love it. And this step? Staying in contact. Fabulous. That's all I want. Yes. All right. Thank you, everyone. That's the end of the reflection session. And I'm now going to hand back to Sarah to finish the afternoon. So please join me, yes, in thanking Hilary. So uh, I know probably this session for some people was out of their comfort zone. It required you to sit back and think and um, reflect and then reflect some more. So I know that's, as Hilary said at the beginning of her session, something we don't practice a lot. So I, I guess I'd ask you as you go into this kind of holiday season to think about how you use that time to do some reflection as well. Practice some of the techniques that Hilary talked about, whether it's 10 deep breaths and how many times you have to keep doing that before you can kind of get yourself centred again or whether it's just asking those questions that Hillary had on her slide about what I've learnt from this, what I want to take forward, what am I going to do about it. But before we just go downstairs and um, innovate over a drink, um, I just a number of people have asked uh, through the last few months what's sort of happening next with UNSW Professional. Um, so and obviously there's a lot of people who couldn't come today given the time of the year. So next year we're really starting to plan for how we're going to embed the behaviours further at UNSW. Marina's done some great work already thinking about 
about how do we make some of these tools that we've used on this program, but other tools, how do we get material so that you are able to use that with your teams? How can we make some of this, uh, the language about around the UNSW behaviours and get people starting to think about that journey we've been on? How can we make that more scalable for the rest of our staff? Obviously, we've only had a small group participate in this opportunity. So we'll have some further networking sessions. It'll be more open to you know, um, staff more generally. We'll have some material up on our UNSW Behaviours website. In particular, I know a couple of faculties have already started using some material that Marina's prepared to lead, where leaders can lead conversations with their teams around the behaviours, about how those behaviours might live and breathe in their school or their faculty or their team. Um, so there'll be a number of different opportunities um, to engage with the behaviours further. Obviously, after today, we're doing quite a bit of work next year in terms of embedding the behaviours in more and more of our people and culture initiatives and practices. So stay tuned, stay connected. As this team um, said, obviously Marina um, will provide some a follow up in the new year to this session and so some of the materials and linkages so you can access some of that material. We'll have an opportunity um, after today to give more feedback and more ideas. Uh, Marina will send out some uh, some questions for you to um, answer. We've really taken on board, I hope you've seen it throughout the course of the um, program where you've provided feedback along the way. Um, this program's a lot different to what we envisaged 12 months ago and that's thanks to the feedback that people like you in this room have provided in terms of what you want to see more of or less of and the same will be the case for next year in terms of what you think will resonate at UNSW around these behaviours. So that's really the end of today's session. Before I close out I just wanted to acknowledge a couple of things um, about this whole program. I I'd just like to firstly thank everyone for sticking with us through the year. Um, we're, in terms of where we started with this program, um, for those of you who were here last December, it was in the nicest possible way a bit of a dog's breakfast in terms of the arrangement and setup of the program. Marina and I had only been here a couple of months ourselves um, and I sort of I guess pay a bit of tribute to Peter Noble um, who many of you know who's not with the university any longer but it was really his commitment to trying to do something, show, give the opportunity for senior professional leaders to engage in some personal development. So although he's not here I think you know this is one of the legacies that I think Peter's left with us in terms of giving us the opportunity to participate in this program. Program. Um, I'd particularly like to thank the people who have come along as guest presenters, Hilary and David and Natalie who are here, but all the other presenters who have come. Thanks for coming along to the support and challenge groups and particularly to Janet who um, was, I guess, the, the mastermind behind the idea of having a support and challenge group. I know a lot of the learning for lots of people on this program happened in those small group discussions with peers. So um, just really like to acknowledge you, your efforts as well. And I guess, um, as I'm sure you're all aware, it's really Marina's um, demonstration of all the behaviours that's meant this UNSW professional program has actually happened at all, um, particularly the demonstrates excellence behaviour. Um, she took it really from a pretty dodgy looking spreadsheet and a couple of really dodgy slides um, to making it as professional as you know the experience that you've had over the last 12 months but with workshops, presenters, you know, pre-work, post-work, even all the branding that you see that we didn't have 12 months ago. So I just ask you to thank Marina for her hard work. Um, and um, I wish you all a really safe and happy and healthy holiday. Um, and let's have a drink downstairs. <laughs>